So just imagine a world where people of all ages, all backgrounds, from anywhere, of any gender, of any ethnicity, have equal access to space. And they will, in turn, I think, inspire us back here on Earth. If you've ever, ever had a dream, now is the time to make it come true. And I'd just like to end by saying, welcome to the dawn of a new space age. 10, 9, 10, 8, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Command engine start. 2, 1. Ignition. SpaceX just scored a massive win over Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic. With the massive win of the ISS deorbiting contract, Elon Musk's company is solidifying its lead over Blue Origin, Virgin Galactic, and other private space companies. What does this mean for the future of the space economy? Stay tuned to find out. Remember NASA's Space Shuttle program? It was a game changer for America's space adventures. Those reusable rockets were like something out of a sci-fi movie, launching and landing multiple times to carry astronauts and cargo into orbit. But after the Columbia disaster in 2003, things shifted. By 2011, the shuttle program was phased out. NASA framed it as a strategic move toward deep space exploration. They realized that new tech was essential for real progress, and reusable rockets were just too expensive and challenging at the time. Remember that iconic moon landing? It wasn't cheap. For the Gemini and Apollo programs to happen, the US poured a whopping $290 billion. That's in today's dollars, but here's the kicker. Even though those programs were ambitious and groundbreaking, each space shuttle flight alone cost nearly $1.6 billion. That's a massive difference. So NASA decided to focus on deep space missions, easing the financial load of the International Space Station and opening the door for private companies to join the space race. Elon Musk and SpaceX are taking the space race to a new level. Valued at around $28 billion, SpaceX is one of the most valuable private companies in the world. Musk's ultimate mission to create reusable rockets and spaceships to colonize Mars. No, we're not talking about NASA's abandoned plan for the Mars colony that never was, which you can watch more on our channel. Elon Musk has Mars firmly set in his sights, and SpaceX is making the engines roar to get us there. Their recent launch of the Starship and Super Heavy is a game changer. It's the most powerful rocket since NASA's Saturn V, the one that took us to the moon. It's mostly blasting off a few fiery oopsies along the way, so make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the bell to get all the juicy details on our channel. On May 22, 2012, the SpaceX Dragon spacecraft became the first commercial craft to transport cargo to and from the ISS. SpaceX showed it could get astronauts to the ISS for less than we were paying Russia. With an increasingly routine launch cadence, they completed 18 successful launches in 2018, including launching and landing two rockets within 48 hours. SpaceX made history by launching the first supply mission to the International Space Station on a reused rocket. SpaceX hit another milestone on May 30th, 2020, with their Crew Dragon Demo-2 mission, sending NASA astronauts Douglas Hurley and Robert Behnken up to the ISS. It was like watching history unfold right before our eyes, and they didn't stop there. Later that year, on November 15th, 2020, they launched the first operational Crew Dragon mission with a diverse crew, including the first black astronaut on a long-duration ISS mission and a Japanese astronaut who's now flown on three different spacecraft. Talk about frequent flyer miles. SpaceX isn't going it alone, though. NASA's been right there providing funding and support, this teamwork has shaken up the aerospace industry. 
Now, everyone's scrambling to get a piece of the global launch market pie that used to be dominated by China and Russia. Then, in March 2024, SpaceX launched its 30th cargo mission to the space station from Pad 40 at Cape Canaveral, using a Falcon 9 rocket and a Cargo Dragon spacecraft, carrying over 6,000 pounds of cargo and science. Can you believe it? 30 missions. They're practically running a space delivery service at this point. NASA announces who will next carry supplies to the International Space Station. The space agency calls these resupply launches. Since astronauts can't run out to the neighborhood store, these flights are critical to the survival of our astronaut neighbors living 220 miles away from the Earth. The competition for this latest contract was between SpaceX, Orbital, ATK, and Sierra Nevada. Hiring commercial companies for this important job has been controversial, but the director of JSC says it is the future of NASA. The space agency relied on the space shuttle until it was retired in 2011. SpaceX leads toward private space stations as NASA transitions the space station to commercial operations. Their expertise and track record will ensure this transition goes smoothly. The International Space Station, or ISS, has been a true game-changer for space exploration. Imagine it as a science lab orbiting Earth at 250 miles, roughly 402 kilometers high, the only one of its kind where astronauts can study the effects of space on everything, from plants to human cells. It's like a giant Petri dish, but way cooler, and definitely with a better view. This research has been a gold mine of information helping us understand how microgravity affects living things. Think of it as training for future space missions like extended moon stays or even Mars trips. We've learned tons about growing food in space, how microbes behave in zero gravity, and even gained insights into diseases like Alzheimer's and cancer. Here's the thing, even the most incredible things get old eventually. The ISS has been working hard for a long time, and it's starting to show some wear and tear. Astronauts launched a very complicated series of spacewalks today to fix a cosmic ray detector at the International Space Station. Space is a harsh environment, and we've seen over the past couple of years small leaks appear within the space station. These are not life-threatening, there's nothing serious, but it is an indication that the lifetime of the International Space Station might be coming to an end. We have a whole video about the growing space debris problem, and let me tell you, a tiny wire tie once caused a satellite scare yikes. The International Space Station is currently approved to operate through at least December 2024 with our agreements with the international partners. However, as we are actively working to continue to do science and research, we understand that the ISS at some point will have its end of life. NASA is looking to SpaceX and other companies for help, including a recent $843 million deal to bring the ISS back to Earth by around 2031 safely. They're calling it the US Deorbit Vehicle. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi flick, right? The space station weighs over 450 tons and is too massive to burn up entirely during re-entry. The Deorbit Vehicle will take the space station on a one-way trip into the ocean. Don't worry, it'll be a controlled landing in a big, empty Pacific Ocean like a space graveyard for old spacecraft. And the fishes will love the new habitat. They'll be calling it the International Space Reef soon enough. While the ISS is a collaborative project involving five space agencies, NASA, the Canadian Space Agency, the European Space Agency, the Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency, and Roscosmos, this whole deal with SpaceX is a big deal for a few reasons. First, it shows that NASA trusts private companies for essential space missions, which could change the game for future collaborations. Second, the price tag, a whopping $843 million, shows how tricky it is to bring down a giant space station safely. Third, by using an American company, NASA is keeping space tech expertise in the US, which is essential in this space race. As for the other space agencies involved with the ISS, it's still unclear how they'll contribute to the deorbiting process. But one thing's for sure, the future of space exploration looks bright. Even if the ISS itself is headed for a watery retirement, the space race is heating up, but it's not just about countries now. 
private companies are entering the arena, and with the retirement of the International Space Station, a new chapter is about to begin. What will these private space stations look like? Who will be building them? Tell us in the comments below. Watch our video on NASA's historic return to the moon with the Artemis program explained.